We gather here today to talk about two archetypes that I feel um, are very present in my life. And um, one of them, going straight to the core of what we're talking today, one of them is what I like to call nebula, which is this archetype of confusion, self-doubt, not knowing, and the finite aspect of life. And that leads us to a very dark place inside our minds, trying to understand, trying to make sense of why we're here. And that archetype of nebula is this cosmic energy that exists way before me and will keep existing way after me. It's a composition of these patterns that keep repeating throughout history. Um, so because of the way the mind operates and trying to create preservation for us, our brains are um, designed to make sense of things, make quick associations, to try to keep us alive. And a lot of things in life we learn are not something we can make sense of. Uh, we don't have control over. And it creates this paradox between the things we can control and the things we cannot control. And not knowing what those things are, are nebula. So, you know, a lot of times you are taught to dive into your heart, um, ask questions, honest questions to yourself, and come up with honest answers. But a lot of times, before you do that, you put yourself into nebula. Any problem, any new person, um, a new relationship, or a new job, it will put you in a position, an uncomfortable position of not knowing who these people are, how the relationship is going to develop, or even after somebody's passing, how is life going to be without that person? Um, those are some of the questions that can happen during Nebula. So it's like that torment inside your head. And an analogy to Nebula would be Neptune in astrology, which creates that idea of the waves, um, the massive waves in a perfect storm in the middle of the ocean. And, you know, if you're there, you're fucked, basically. So Nebula is, it creates this, it generates this huge amount of energy. I believe the movie X-Men, whatever, the role of um, Jan or Jean, I think it's Jean. I think it's Jean. Um, she has this power to access the unconscious mind and she's almost uh, tormented by it rather than um, show power over it. It's almost like it's so, it's so strong, it's so bizarrely humongous that, you know, our tiny little brains cannot make sense of it. So by diving into Nebula, you are going to feel like a little needle in a haystack. Um, you're going to feel like um, an airplane turbulence. Uh, and it's a period of many questions. So you ask a lot of questions to yourself. And um, questions will lead to more questions. And, you know, you're going to answer in one way one day because you're feeling a specific way. And then you're going to answer a different way on another day because you're feeling differently. And this archetype of nebula is disturbing. Um, and that's the place we get when we allow uh, the ego to take over. But then I want to talk about the other archetype, which is Polaris. And those are archetypes that I see in my life. So Polaris is, by the way, my new artistic name, as we call it. Um, a name that it's not my last name, but it, it's inspired um, a, on this archetype of Polaris. So Polaris is one of the 
um, stars, the North Star within the constellation of Ursa Major. It's a constellation in the sky. So the North Star of that constellation is called Polaris. So the North Star in your astrological chart is where your soul is heading to. So your South Star is where you're coming from, like the things that you developed in different lives, your um, the characteristics, your talents, your skills, those things that you kind of know within yourself are your South Star. But your North Star is, you know, the, the stuff that you are here to learn. And obviously, if you're here to learn, it's kind of a new territory for you to walk on. It has this unknown vibe, uh, Polaris, but it's more like a muscle that you need to develop rather than something you need to create from scratch. So it's probably something that your spirit already has in it, but it doesn't, it needs to, it needs to shine. You know, you need to bring it from your subconscious into the conscious. Um, so Polaris is that call um, that voice in yourself that keeps, um, moving you towards something. So when I created Mara Pol Polaris is, you know, I, I always wanted an artistic name, kind of, um, something that would remind me of the creator inside of me. Um, and Polaris was the perfect combination between Mara and my journey. So Mara is who I am right now, which is a constant ongoing under construction type of process. So by being this person, by navigating uh, my journey, I feel like Mara doing the journey is Mara Polaris. And I say Mara because that's how, you know, people usually call me um, in, in English, but in Portuguese we say Maura. So I used so many different names, uh, Maurinda, um, Mara's magic, Mara's special. I'm trying always to find some sort of um, partnership with the names. And I feel like Polaris is a perfect representation of where I want to go artistically, which has um, a variety of elements. Like I said in my previous video, it's not necessarily constrained to a particular uh, subject or even a particular environment, I feel like the need to create is the need to create. It can be through speaking, it can be through music, it can be through painting, it can be through even something that's more practical, like, um, you know, something within your work life um, that you normally, you would think that, you know, there's no creativity to be utilized there, but there's always an opportunity to express creativity in whatever you're doing. Creativity is a way of processing things inside yourself. You grab all the possibilities that uh, reside inside of you, meaning you bring to the table the not-so-good aspects of yourself and the good aspects of yourself and the unknown aspects of yourself. You lay that all on the table, and you can choose what you're going to use. So the more creative you are, the more of these tools you see now, that's the problem when a person is not utilizing, fully utilizing their creativity, their inner creativity, that's because they're only seeing one tool on the table. The magician card um, on the tarot talks a lot about, um, you know, as above, so below, which is you got to first see in your mind. You got to first create that electrical impulse in your mind. Like, boom, the image comes. And then you bring it to the heart where you're going to experience that thought and emotions, right? So when you experience that, you become magnetic. It's, a, it's an electromagnetic process. And then you end up vibrating and uh, resonating and attracting, as they call it, or manifesting it to you because it's the same match. It's a vibrational match. So the creativity needs to be that vibrational match. You need to see what you have laying around on your table, like the magician, um, the earth, air, fire, water. And you know how to utilize those things. So it might be that in some aspects of your life, you might be using more like water. 
It might be that you are more invited in that area of your life to be more emotional, more fluid, um, more um, kind of in your body. And there are other aspects of your life that you're going to be required to be more earthy, like, you know, paying attention to your health, paying attention to the clock, work. Um, and, you know, the fire might be that creative side within yourself that just fuels the urge to do something right, something record, something, or even go to the gym to do something. You know, the creator, um, it's not, art is not necessarily what you would think of art, like what's in the museum, art. Um, or even like something that's um, copyrighted or, or, you know, it's it's more of what you create as a human being while experiencing something like a person or a circumstance. When you are creating is when you look at the table, like I said, and you see all these tools, water, you see like emotions, thoughts, you see intention, creativity, feelings, like all these things, safety, what can you do with it? And creativity is the usage of these tools and there's no such thing as a person who is not creative because the fact that you're living you're breathing you are creating the fact that you are having thoughts and feelings um, is creativity in itself but if you are just seeing one tool on your table you're not going to be um, experiencing the full range of potential you have as a soul so polaris is the pole kind of circling back, is the pull that I feel towards this creative self of, uh, of mine. And um, it's kind of, um, you know, that light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing. So I'm walking towards that. And I like to think that I experience my future self at this present moment when I'm here recording and talking about the things that are true for me right now and that's how I visualize myself. Um, it's I want to be a person that owns and kind of embodies and talks about what what it really happens with her as a way of inspiring because that's my creativity, right? So the tools I have on my desk when I decide to grab the microphone and use my communication, use the fact that my fire allow me to speak on another language. My story, which is my earth side of what was reality for me. So I grab all these tools and I create something. And it, it will look differently for different people. But the, the Polaris is the archetype of what you are aspiring to be. And with that comes Nebula. Because what you are aspiring to be is still an idea in your mind that's going to be eventually felt in your heart and created into reality. So even though you see it in your mind first, the way, the journey towards the Polaris, kind of um, um, the path towards Polaris would be this archetype that's always pulling you to do something creative to do something that's true to yourself. It could be um, living on the mountains and it could be living on the city, going to uh, the bars and dancing, you know, your life out in a bar, for instance. It could be for other person being creative is, you know, riding horses. Um, another one being creative is raising their children um, and, you know, being with them, playing with them, homework with them, being present for them. It could be for another person. It might be traveling the world, teaching. It, 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 there's just so many ways to create. E each one of us has our own way. It could be designing clothing. It could be uh, painting. I recently bought this shamanic drum, and it has this awesome sound and I really looked into this lady's shop and I was like oh my goodness like oh my goodness you're good she has these videos of her playing different hides uh, of these shamanic drums and and they all have a different sound and she gets into you know the the energy of the hide if it's feminine if it's masculine and her shop has thousands and thousands of reviews so her art is creating shamanic drums I went to see a wellness uh, ritual happen um, in, in a place close by, 
and I saw like four different artists, each one playing sound healing instruments. Like one one was playing the crystal bowls, the other one had like um, a percussion, the other one had the shamanic drums and some rain sticks, and and it was like it was so trippy to be there listening to all these different instruments. It was like this experience of these, I guess, instruments I've never um, heard before, and they just touched me so deeply. And the creator inside of me felt like a little, a few more elements were laid on my desk. It's like, okay, universe, you know, there's more space here. So if you want to present me with more things, I guess we can call it inspiration, right? So it just tosses something on your desk and you start thinking that there's a reason for you to get back to work and create. So these two archetypes, um, Nebula and Polaris, are always very present in my life. And I would say Nebula, um, it, it happens a little bit before... I get the pull. So when I'm having uh, an inspirational phase in my life, Nebula comes in and says, why are you doing this? What is the meaning? You're not making any money from it. Like, you know, what is your intention with this? Who is teaching you? Like, what kind of in instruction or education do you have to be doing this? Like, there's all kinds of um, downgrading your potential so nebula contracts and then polaris is the inner intention of expansion so polaris wants to expand but on the way like on the journey towards polaris it's the unknown so inherently the unknown will carry the archetype of nebula and every time I'm in Nebula, I try to think that, you know, it's almost like the airplane turbulence. It's going to pass. So if I just kind of listen to all these questions in my head without necessarily diving into them, being like, mm, okay, I hear you. I hear your question. I hear your fear. I hear, um, like, if you're heading towards the surgery a procedure, or if you have a family member um, that's kind of, you know, crossing over, if you have a job that you're just completely done and you want to move on from, if you have a relationship. So when you are, like, you know, you're going to feel that um, discomfort inside of you and, and Nebula is going to present you with a thousands of different reasons why that shit's going to go down and if you feed too much of that wolf, that's going to be used into your detriment. So it is wise to just kind of see these as like clouds and just imagine yourself as an airplane. And perhaps during this moment of nebula, you're shaking, but then you adjust yourself to just, just go a little bit above the clouds. And how do you go above the clouds? And that's the Polaris. That you keep your goal in mind. So if you have a vision of yourself, let's say health, for instance, which is something more dear to me. So if my vision of my self being healthy, I have to first think of what is healthy to me, right? And a few of the items I have is vitality. So if you are, if you are having energy and vitality to live your day, you're healthy. And then when you're not having pain, to me is another consideration of being healthy and you have your body functioning at at an optimum level where you're not getting sick uh, and especially with chronic disease right so when i think about my future self i think of someone healthy and i think of my version healthy and it's not that difficult to think about because i have already been healthy so that's the thing when you're stuck on nebula it puts you in a position of you're never going to get that but if you just sit around a little bit and try to dig in into your files, you're going to find some sort of an example, experience, evidence in your past that you were able to do that. And that will give you the confidence you need to move forward towards expansion. But during that time, you just kind of have to go right up above 
the clouds by uh, making an effort of digging these evidences and uh, asking yourself where you're heading to, you know, and if, if it is really true, if your higher self is going to take care of you, support you, care for you, and um, kind of uh, guide you through the way. Just think about it. If your higher self determined that you were here for a reason, if, if, if you came alive and you're breathing right now and your higher self has a purpose for you, if you are in congruence with that, don't you think that your higher self is going to be super happy and applauding and, you know, kind of happy for you, waiting for you at the end line, kind of, you know, with the bottle of water to give it to you? Of course. So what you do during nebula, when you rise above the clouds, when you rise above that nebula, is when you remind yourself where you're going. And where you're going is clear. And your higher self is supporting you. So your wings are supporting you. Your dream is supporting you. So if you, if you trust that, that that's where you're heading to, nebula can be something that's passing by. The problem is, is we lose touch with our dreams and our polarities and where, we're go where we want to go. We lose touch with that and we get trapped in nebula. So we get completely sidetracked into the turbulence. We can't see anything. We can't see below. We can see above. We cannot see our table full of tools. And we just get that conversation constantly fucking up with our minds. But I understand that the archetype is there. And especially in my life, it's constantly present. And like I said, with health, it will come like a day where I'm not feeling my best symptom-wise. And I start having symptoms and pain. And that's just triggered to you're not healthy. There is something wrong with you. And the nebula starts shaking my plane. And saying, like, you're sick, you're going to die. This is a bad disease. Look at this person. She had a disease. Look at that person. There's just so much suffering with diseases. So by getting into that turbulence, kind of, you know, other lightning kind of vibes come from everywhere. And you're just completely shook up, like fucked up in the head. So you have to make a conscious effort to just bring yourself together to the middle and kind of guiding your plane, which you are the pilot, to get off the clouds, up above, to reassess what you're going to do next to keep on your journey. And they, a lot of people say that it is not so much about the destination like Polaris. It's much more about the journey. So it's kind of that pull. I like to call Polaris the archetype that it just kind of a, it's magnetic. It's just calling you. Like I said, if your higher self has a purpose for you, it has to bring that magnetic intention inside of you. So if you don't have this information, how are you going to do this? So it plants this seed of desire and intention inside of you that only you has access to it. And that's why you are the co-creator of your life. Today we talked a little bit about these two archetypes because I feel like they are pretty much uh, my life when I feel like I am navigating through uh, processes in my life. It's always being guided um, polaris-wise towards spreading good, um, you know, peaceful, um, energetic kind of vibes into the world. Um, creating and calling uh, people to just be themselves um, by mirroring, kind of being that person, embodying that person. And those are the two major things. And, and Nebula keeps bringing this confusion and this questioning, self-doubt, self-criticism. And a lot of times you get stuck. Now I am learning a little bit quicker how to come out of it, how to rise above and bringing it to a more um, homeostasis kind of a dynamic. So think a little bit about how these archetypes are present in your life. Moments of nebula you had and uncertainty and doubt and fear and kind of um, not knowing. And um, the moments of polaris where you just felt that vibe in you just carrying you over and kind of making you move like you have no other option 
that um, pull, that call, that voice, that fire inside of you, that intention that's unique to you, to um, what you came to do here, what your higher self through the consciousness decided to do here, um, that's what I am calling you today to tap into so we can uh, become more in tune with ourselves and consequently more powerful to create great things for this planet. Drop the mic.